Hello and welcome to a new part of our um, offline Svelte-Kit app with SQLite Journey. And um, in this part, we're going to look at actually inserting data. So here um, I downloaded the, the database file and we have actually managed to insert data into both apps. And um, yeah, in the second table order details, um, there's, there are actually over 2,000 rows and it's super fast to insert these. So check out the tutorial. Thanks for tuning in. So we start off with fixing actually a small bug uh, I introduced in the last part. And um, this is uh, inside the get customers uh, database function that is used in our API that um, gets the customer's data. And here we return data in this more rows attribute. And um, the problem here is that, for example, we have 50 rows in this table and we, we, we ask for 50 rows. We get 50 and this check is data length equals the limit. And in this case, this is true, but we have no more rows, but uh, it would uh, say so. So let's fix that quickly. We can just um, create a function here, get custom account. And um, in here we can then go ahead and um, say um, get custom account equals offset plus limit. Um, so then we will now um, if we fetch everything. Great. So um, next up, we're gonna start with um, loading um, all the data. We go to this init storages um, function here. And here is the part where we um, check if a table exists. If not, we create it here. And uh, this is a part where we will need to um, also initialize the data. So here we check if it has data, we will call fill storage and we will create that function in a moment. But also if we just created the storage, we also want to call that. And um, what this function does is it um, it first um, we define some arguments or, or variables here. So page size, we want to fetch 100 rows, insert them and fetch the next one. So we don't, um, if we have a table with thousands of rows, we won't, don't want to get everything all at once. Um, just do it step by step. Current offset, so we can, if we have yeah many rows, we can increase this number to know what to fetch, which rows to fetch next and fetch more. We do a do while loop here. So um, we then know what to do. And uh, we also need a second function to actually fetch the data from the API we created in the last video. Um, so I'm just click me, clicky show it. So we have this API endpoint for our customers. We want storage in there. We have the structure to get basically how the table looks and also the data that just calls the database function and returns it. And um, to get data, we fetch it just with the offset and limit parameters and plainly return it. And we also have a new type for uh, this, the data row type I added. And this is just um, a generic key value object where the key is a column name and the values can currently be string, number, boolean or null. And um, yeah, we can import that. And here we are back at our loop. And in here, what we need to do is um, go ahead and uh, fetch the data with the current uh, offset and the page size. And um, then we can go ahead and 
ask our worker to insert the data, fill storage. And if there's an error, we handle it and we then increase our current offset and um, check if we need to fetch more. Great. So we also need to add these types here. Um, first, uh, message types, fill storage and fill storage response. And we also have data types for them. So in the request, we send the structure and the rows we want to insert and we get an error message if something, an error occurred. So let's import these types. And yeah, the next part we need to do still is handle this uh, message type in the worker. So we go to our worker file and um, in here we have um, to handle it. So we extend the case. So here's the create table stuff we created in the last video. And below it, we can just do the fill storage. And let me again import the types. And um, yeah, we, we will create this handle fill storage function, um, call it, and then just re send the response back. So this one, we're gonna create it in the storage handler TS below the handle create table function. And um, yeah, okay, so let me copy it quickly. Handle fill storage, okay, I need to import the types. And we just extract the data, the rows, the structure, the storage ID from, from the message. And um, then we are gonna call a function we will create shortly um, that generates the inter insert SQL. So basically puts all the columns in there. And um, then we can loop over each row and execute the insert statement with the binds. And yeah, these two functions we need to create. So here in the utility, um, I just create a gen insert SQL TS. And what this does is um, it gets storage ID and structure and we start with insert into table name and we just push every column name into an array and then we can yeah reference each column name join them with commas and also we need to of course put the values in there and um, I'm gonna prefix the column names with a dollar there so map over it, add a dollar to each column name, also join them. And that's because in Escalite here in the WebAssembly part, uh, we can use that as bind references. So dollar, dot, dollar column name and um, um, the bind values, we just pass an object here of the row. Um, we also have to, to change the the column names there to have a dollar prefix so we create this get bind object um, function and this is also fairly simple we just get our data row in here and we just loop and add the dollar sign f uh, prefix for each key so we basically make for example id will then be dollar id so um, then SQLite can correctly bind these values. And we need to import the functions here. At last, we need to import this function in the worker. And if I made no errors, yeah, this looks great. Okay, so um, fetched 93 rows from customer. So we get locked all the data from the API request. Here's the log of the insert statement. So each column and as I said, the dollar prefix for the values part. And um, to see if this actually work, we can use our OPFS Explorer tool here, download the database file. And I'm gonna open it with Beekeeper Studio. It's uh, free open source. 
Um, SQLite database viewer. Oops, that's a test window. This is the one I opened. And um, here we can see our table is not empty anymore. We basically inserted all the rows. So we did fill the storage, but there's actually room to massively improve the speed or the efficiency on how to, to fill the storage. And for that, we're gonna uh, want to time first um, the filling. Um, so I'm gonna go to the um, SQLite and here the init storage stuff. And um, in there we can, in the fill storage function here, we can use a timer, console.time. We give a unique ID, it's just fill storage and then storage name and in the end we can call console time end and um, that's a nice way to uh, basically at, when we call this it will print in the console the time it took to, to pr uh, do this so we know exactly how long the fill storage um, um, function was used and also we need a different data set because um, the one we used before the customer data it's just 800 rows and we want to look at how to do basically um, about uh, I think 2000 rows and um, so I'm gonna go to the database file and here I have this new functions get order details and um, this order details uh, table is yeah, very boring um, doesn't really matter what's in here but it has 2000 rows so I use this and um, we then can go to our um, to our data API, uh, API data folder here it's gonna paste this order details one and here we have just the data endpoint again that fetches the data of the um, backend database and again one that describes the structure and um, I need to start the dev server and um, yeah okay um, then we can the, the cool thing about um, how flexible this is we just have to go here and um, add this one to the storages array and now if I click save and go here um, nothing happens. I think I need to reload maybe. Or oh, what did I do wrong? Um, has data true? Oh, I think I, I reloaded while it was uh, starting to add some data. So let's delete it again and reload. And yeah, okay, here you can now see the table being filled. And uh, yeah, you can, I guess, quickly assume it's not really that fast. Um, I mean, there's a lot of network going on, but in the end, this took 15 seconds. Um, and I think that's not, not as fast as it should be. So, but we have actually a lot of room for improvement. It's, it's not that complicated. So we go back to our worker and uh, in the worker we have this um, storage handler. And here is the part where we do the insert. And um, we just go ahead and always call db.exec um, on the row. First thing we can improve is we do a transaction. So if we, um, well, the way before it just single-handedly transact every row, and this is not really efficient um, because um, yeah we can basically just write them to the memory first, and then if the transaction is, if we uh, or if everything was inserted, then it will end the transaction and persist it on disk and we save a lot of um, disk write operations by that. And uh, second second part is here, we always, by always calling db.exec 
every time the statement needs to be passed and uh, it's just the same insert statement. So we can use prepare to first pass or single uh, uh, to only pass the insert statement one time. And then we can go ahead and uh, in here, not go with the exec, but basically um, for each row bind the object on the statement and uh, do some error handling. And finally we call step reset to basically tell it, okay, this is my first set of binds, now the next, and now the next. So for each row, we basically have to call step reset. And in the end to say we are done, we call statement of finalize. And yeah, let's check out what uh, improvements we've got. So we had 15 seconds before, let's delete the database and reload and oh, we are done. It was <laughs> 330 milliseconds. So it's a lot of times faster. So always keep in mind, use transactions if you write a lot of data and if you have recurring um, um, statements like in inserting a lot of data, you can use state prepared statements to um, yeah save time on parsing the the statement. Okay, this is already it for this part. Or oh, let's just quickly to make sure it actually works. Let's just download that file again, replace it. Um, And I'm gonna again show Beekeeper Studio here. This is a downloaded file and all our details. And we have also here lots of data. So we can also do a select count star of uh, from order details and run it. And we you can see it's over 2000 rows. So yeah, pretty fast in 300 milliseconds. This is it for this part. Um, in the next one, we're gonna look at how we can actually use the data in here and display it. <laughs> this page is still pretty empty, so we can show the data in here from the offline storage or the local storage. And um, yeah, please check that out if it comes out. Um, thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, feedback, put it in the comments. If you didn't already, please subscribe and hope I see you in the next part. Bye.